are here at this beautiful pharmacy, is what I would call it, the original pharmacy for gods and goddesses here in the heart of Cairo, Egypt. And we're with Jamal Abdul Sami Zaki. Exactly. A fifth generation chemist or a fifth generation alchemist. He takes the flowers and extracts the essence and has been taught by his family how to utilize them for healing, for communication, for bringing out the best that can be brought out in a person. Today, the group found our way here thanks to our brilliant guides with Quest Tours. And in the tour, Emil, our guide, was so excited to bring us here to Jamal's pharmacy, to his beautiful shop here. It smells fragrant. It is as beautiful as you're seeing it, the colors on tape, there are those scents, those smells that we're experiencing. And we actually got to sample each of the seven magic elixirs for each of the chakras. And these elixirs, this wisdom, this teaching, five generations or more back. And as we just learned a couple minutes ago, we are standing in the line with the Great Pyramid of Giza, where we are, and Jamal meditates every day to bring in Isis, Hathor, all the wise elder wisdom keepers, goddesses, gods, in order to serve the people that find his way, find their way, find our way into the store. So thank you. <laughs> He's going to do some readings for us, and he sees auras and communicates through the unseen realm to find words to share what he sees and what he experiences. We've been benefiting from his great words and wisdom so far. So I'm going to take a seat, and we'll, we'll let you continue, Professor Jamal. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sister, but uh, I would love to continue, but to talk about the oils and the wisdom of the oil and the magic of the oils. I learned not yes. to read and not to do reading in public. Ah. Everyone has the right to have secrets. S yes. And everyone has the, the time to listen. Yes. To talk about the magic of the oils. Yes. That's very important to deliver the message to everyone who need it. Because nowadays, 80% of our suffering doesn't have phys physical reasons. So we have to search where is the suffering come from to know how to heal it. Yes. They haven't produced until now a tablet to heal the headache. Just symptom relief, and I'm a doctor. And it comes back right? again. I'm a, and I'm it a medical so, doctor, yes. and only two percent of illness goes from genetics. Ninety-eight percent based on stress. Exactly. And how would you define the different bodies that you were sharing about earlier? The, this is exactly what I want to say. The ancient Egyptian, they studied the whole world, and they studied the universal interior. They knew what kind of magic and energy are there and what we miss to have in our bodies. When there is something happening in the body, so felt something, this body needs something, we have to give to this body what is the body need. And mostly the body needs energy, but on different levels. Nowadays, most of our masters, teachers, healers, talk a lot about the seven centrals of energies, but they forget that we have four levels like four bodies, spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical. Pain, suffering, pain, suffering, blocked, control, stress, punishment, illness, happens all in the physical body. But reasons of it are mostly somewhere else. 
In the ancient Egyptian, they used to know where is the pain come from and to work on the reasons of it to heal it. They did miracles and miracles exist up until now if we know how to use our magic. Yeah. We have lots of capacity. We have lots of gifts. In our hands, we have all what they used in the ancient Egyptian time, but if we know how to read it. For an example, just a little example. The culture of perfumes, nowadays many people they think it started in Europe and in France. Yeah. That's not the truth. The culture of perfumes started in Egypt almost 12,500 years ago. And the first recipes of the ancient Egyptian perfumes are written up until now in Edfu temple. It's still written in the wall of the temple. The, how it's extracted is written in the Edfu temple. And, and the recipes. Yes, and the recipes and the exact how to bring it out, how to distill exactly. it. Exactly, and we still do the same. In Egypt, we are lucky. We have four okay. crops a year in Delta and in El Fayum. That's where we grow the flowers. Then we collect them separate, take the bottles, crush it, have the essence, do a distillation for it to have the pure extract. That's what we call it, essential oils. Fix it with jojoba oil, jojoba, jojoba. jojoba. Yes. And do another distillation, so we turn it from essential oil to a natural oil paste. And then we do out of it the plants. We started to talk about the magic of the perfumes. Yes. Just to know, perfume what suits everyone, 40% skin type, 30% character, 20% taste, 10% temperature where we live. That's perfume, yes. what suits everyone. 20% from our character are genetic, as yes. you were saying, yes. comes from the family. But 80% comes from experience in life. That's why we yes. found some people like very sweet smells, others like very strong, others like very light, others like very soft. It depends yes. on the character of the person and what kind of message you are delivering behind the smell what you are wearing, the scent what you are wearing. So sometimes your body's more receptive, sometimes it's more acidic. Different time when you're more stressed, a different essence would work better than when you're in a relaxed state. And I love how you were sharing the four bodies, the spiritual aspect, the mental aspect, the emotional, and then the physical. And in the physical, everything changes when you put an essence on it penetrates the thoughts it penetrates the spirit it penetrates any mental uh, um, recognition there's no words for the intelligence coming from the flowers that the energy that they hold from the nature from nature from nature because the scent what we have it can be a flower scent it can be spice scent, it can yes. be fruits. Uh, we learned how to use the energy, but I forget to say that is in the ancient Egyptian time, the oils was holy. And there was around 40 oils that it have been used in many different works, yes. in many different uh, therapy, in many different um, spiritual, mental, emotional, physical, material work. How to found and how to know which oils you need, you have to know what you want to do. So knowing your purpose. Exactly. Contributes to the oil that is first drawn and called to work with you. Exactly. Look, sister, I was talking about the perfume just for opening a door. Yes. And you are, you as a healer, as a great healer and master, guiding us mm -hmm. to your profession. Yes. Talking about how to heal people. Yes. How to heal people, it's very easy and very complicated. Because people doesn't want to face their truth. Yes. Why? Truth mostly heard 
but it helps. I think it's so true that a truth can hurt, but I think the ones that wind up here in this store are truly seeking to be on purpose, and that um, it's the kind of hurt uh, that I would say stretches us, expands us. And I used to say, I love you so much. I used to say this to my husband, to my friends. I used to say, I love you so much, it hurts. And then later, I found myself more accurately saying, I love you so much, it stretches me, <laughs> it expands me. And I think that's one of the reasons we come to places like this, to face parts of ourselves so that we can stretch. And I, I know that another occurrence that happens for us is in the stretching, when there is a, a bright light that comes, great wisdom that shares, we have to expand to receive it. And that expansion, that receiving, can feel momentarily like hurt. And I think for the professor, for the one that's sharing it, it hurts more because we see the potential in essence for the person when they receive it. So we perceive it sometimes as that hurt. Let me, let me share uh, uh, an easy system yes. to know our truth very quickly. Yes. Many people, they come to me and say, Gamal, I don't know where is my suffering come from. They really know, deeply inside they really know, but yes. they aren't prepared to face it, or they are escaping from it. Yes. We are good in cheating ourselves, as I said before, and when we cheat ourselves, everyone else can cheat us, but when we don't, nobody can yes. cheat us. I always say to my colleagues, they call themselves my students, and I call them my colleagues and my professors, because they, taught, they teach us a lot as much as they learn from us, if you want to help anyone very quickly, you have to turn yourself to be a mirror for the other through the word you are saying. And there is two types of mirror. Yes. There is a physical mirror and a spiritual mirror. The physical mirror, you start from asking the person, but it has to be very quickly straight, don't give time so the person does not cheat himself. Do you like your hair? Do you like your eyes? Do you like your nose? Do you like your mouth? Do you like your throat? Do you like your shoulders? Do you like your arms? Do you like your hands? Do you like your chest? Do you like your back? Do you like your stomach? Do you like your sexual, sexual part in front? Do you like your bottom? Do you like your legs? Do you like your feet? And listen to the answers. Beautiful questions. Answer. Beautiful questions. Some people, they say, what you are talking about? Hair, eyes, nose, ears, mouth. They don't know. The hair in the ladies are the feminine crown. Yeah. And men are the wisdom. The eyes is all what we see. The nose and the man are the ego, and the lady are the beauty, because are, it is the center of the face. Yes. The mouse, if we are able to talk our truth or not. The ears, if we are able to listen to the truth or not. Yes. The throat are the age. From here we can know, we can tell if the person are old or young. The shoulders, are our backpack from the life, all what we carry from the responsibility yes. there. The arms and the legs are the power of the person, but in ladies with the feminine beauty. And this is why many ladies, they know how to show their beauty through their dress. Yes. And showing their arms, like right now, or <laughs> in showing their legs in, in a different, <laughs> In a, in a different uh, dresses. That's why the fashion, the fashion, 80% are for ladies, 10% yes. for men, and 10% for children. Hence, 
it has to do with giving and receiving. Right hand giving, left hand receiving. Yes. The chest in the ladies, the breast in the ladies, are the ego of the ladies. And sometimes has to do with the mother side, has to do with the sexual part. The stomach is all what we eat and drink all our life. The back, all what we cannot see. Not, with, not what we don't see, what we cannot see. The bottom, are we centered in our places or not? The sexual part in front, do we accept our truth or not? Being feminine or being masculine? The feet, are we in the way or not? This is just a little map of human body. If, when you ask a person this question, you should listen to the answers very good to know what is this person accept from the body and what is does not accept to know why later on after the soul is mirror after the soul is mirror so that's the physical questions and then what are the spiritual questions okay مش عارف اكلم يا ابني 240 ناقص 60% No, 60% yeah. Look, please. The soul is mirror. Start yes. with how was your childhood? How was your childhood? How, how was your relation to the parents? How was the relation to the family? Who's, the, who's from the parents are very close and who's not? Hat Yami. 280 ناقص 60% ال 60% 40% بتاع ال 280 دولار 40% بتاع 280 دولار شكرا يا امي How was your childhood I'm sorry to this stuff oh, I have beautiful. to ask me yeah. How was your childhood How was your relation with the parents How was your relation with the rest of the family Who is from the family are the closer and who's not How many friends do you have And if there is a friend, turns to be an enemy. Do you know why that, why that question? The only one can hurt you very strong and very quickly, someone who know you very good. Do you understand that? Absolutely. Someone who does not know you, he can try, but mostly it doesn't work. Beautiful questions, yeah. What was the best time of freedom in your life? And what was the worst time of freedom in your life? What was the best time of security in your life? What was the worst time of security in your life? What was the best time of independence in your life? What was the worst time of independence in your life? What was the best time of financial security in your life? What was the worst time of financial security in your life? How many person did you have sexually? How many relationship did you had? How many love did you had? What was the best love? What was the worst love? What was the best relationship? What was the worst relationship? Which person was the best sexually and what was the worst sexual experience? If anyone answered these questions honestly, they would know where is their suffering come from very easy. Beautiful. Great questions. Do you and understand that? I do. I loved And how you shared earlier about writing, writing out. This, this is something physical else. Physical pain out by writing, sitting down and answering those questions would be a great exercise. This is something else. <laughs> What I was saying by writing down, in the West they say, you should let go. Yes. And they don't teach us how to let go. So everyone understands it differently. Everyone understands let go is to preach more or to walk more or to meditate more or to dance more or to talk more or to cry more. No, let go means to write your past, your past. We yes. are the result of our past. 
I, I take it a little bit further too, and I'm sure you see it this way. Every image that you've seen, every movie, every song, everything that is from long before you were born, yes. in utero, what your mom experienced yes. as well, we are the sum total of everything that we've heard, we've seen, we've been part of, and that stores itself on our, in our subconscious, e that exactly. unconscious exactly. part. And we relate that to the oils. And in the ancient Egyptian time, the oils, as I said before, was holy. So they need, they knew very good which oil to use in each time. If there is physical pain, which oil to use for it? If there is physical pain, the most helpful oil are sandalwood oil. Can you tell us a story of someone that you helped with each of the oils or something physical that happened? I learned, uh, I had passed millions of experience with millions of people, but I would tell a story of a very beautiful young lady from South Africa. That was 20 years ago. She was passing by Cairo. She was uh, in Cairo for two days. And she came with a group of healers to visit me. But her problem is that she cannot sleep. And she's very much afraid and she's very much hurt. And she didn't, she didn't know who to trust. Was her life was damaged and she was really suffer and she wanted to die and her master the healer who wa who wanted to help her he said to her the only one can help you is gamal let's go to gamal and she came i was talking in general like your visit today about the oils and what the oils do and so but because she was very much afraid, she didn't talk to me. And two weeks later, she phoned me from Cairo airport. I am in the airport of Cairo, and my life is disaster. It's, I have a terrible life, and I need really help, and I don't know who to trust to help me. My master, when we was in Cairo, said that you are the only one can help me and I don't know. If you say yes, I will come to you and stay as long as you tell me to be healed. If you said no, I will take the first plane and I will go to England. I said, yes, I can do it. But I need your help to be honest. She spent it five days in Cairo. I remember very good that she cannot sleep more than an hour and she wake up and she shout and she's very afraid. But I remember that the fourth day she slept 18 hours. Wow. And she phoned me at three o'clock in the morning from the hotel to tell me, Gamal, you cannot leave. I slept 18 hours. I didn't come to visit you today because I was slept all I was sleeping all the time. I said, "Okay, I I believe you, but what you what you don't know is it is 3 o'clock in the morning." <laughs> so so is keep going on sleep yeah. and call me at 9 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> she came the next day. She was like a flying bird. She was very so happy. High and she was, free. she was very happy, free. Yes. She first she cannot talk well. She can talk well. Uh, uh, may I say the reasons and please forgive me. I, I didn't say her name, so she she if she see this she yeah. will, she will know I am talking about her. She have been abused sexually from her father and from her brother and she have been uh, cheated very bad and treated very bad from all the in the relationship and they stole her money and everything was bad everything was bad because she didn't learn from the first experience and she kept doing the same all the time she didn't talk about how, what's happened to her 
So she was very much afraid and shamed. Yes. But when we sucked, when we talked all this out and make her face it and accepted her past. And the oils. With the oils, of course. Yeah. Because I can teach here, but the oil do the rest of the work where, where the people are, in their hotel, in their house. The oil is magic, do the rest of the work.